right? How do we know the decisions that we make are right and wrong? When you're a media professional, you make the hundreds and hundreds of decisions all day long. Um, and the decisions can have a very, very long impact on what you're doing. So you have to make sure that your decision is the right decision, right? That you're taking many different things into consideration when you make that decision. Um, other definitions, um, one, uh, your own personal sense of conscience, which may be informed by many different things, your own culture, politics, your, your religion, or if you don't have a religion, um, there may be philosophical, it could be influenced by your family or influenced by your community, right? All of these things influence your, your sense of ethics, right? Um, and you might be confused about the difference between ethics and morals, right? Morals are more personal. Ethics is more professional, right? So for example, if you, if you don't eat meat, if you're a vegan, you do that for a moral sense. Morally, you think it's wrong to eat animals and eggs and milk and, and things like that. That's your own moral, right? Um, that's not the same as, as ethics, right? It's a bit different, right? But if you are a food company and you want to make vegan food, then you talk about it being ethical. Right? Our company is ethically opposed to eating animals or something like that, right? So it's a bit different. Um, ethics, people, people will also judge you based on, on the decisions that you make. If you are a, a good person or a bad person, or if you've made a mistake, if you can learn from your mistakes, right? People will really, will really use this to see if you are a, a good person or a good citizen of a country or a good, uh, just a good person in general, if you're a good parent, if you treat your children well, or you treat your husband or wife well, how you treat, you know, if you're a good child, if you obey what your parents say, then you're a good child. Um, and many different kinds of things, from being bosses or friends or employees. Um, if you're a good driver, do you let people, you know, cut in front of you or you slow down to have the people walk? Uh, across the street, right? These are all kind of ethical uh, decisions that you make all the time. Um, so it's not just, it's in your personal life, your relationships with other people. Um, and of course, we'll talk mostly about it if you are the boss at a company or you're the employee in some kind of media company, right? These things, media, these ethical decisions affect what you do all day long. Um, now, there's a bunch of different theories of ethics, and when you take your specific ethics class, I'm sure you go more in, into detail about it, but I just want to introduce a, a couple briefly so that we have uh, some basis to talk about. Um, so one theory is, is called utilitarianism, right? developed by many people like uh, Bentham and Mills and, and that. Um, and the basic idea from this is that your decision if you make a decision, it should be what causes the most happiness and prevents the most unhappiness. Right? You, the, deci the decision you make or the laws that we have in a country or things like that, it should make, it should, the point of it is to make more people happy and to not make people unhappy. So when you make a decision, you're thinking, will this make a lot of people happy? And you go, yes, it'll make a lot of people happy, but it'll make a couple people unhappy. You say, well, that's fine. Because more people are happy, few people are unhappy, that's better. Right? If you make a decision and everybody really hates it, but a couple people like it, then it's a bad decision. Right? Or what effect it will have on society. If it will benefit the majority of people, then it's a very, very good decision to make. Right? It, maybe it will have a bad effect on a bunch of people, but that's okay because it benefits the most people. Right? So that's how you should make a, a moral decision. It's based upon this. Is the happiness more than the, than the unhappiness? Right? Um, a decision or law will be good or bad according to its effects, according to the effects it has on augmenting or diminishing the happiness of the community. Right? And Bentham and people like that were talking about the, the community or the country, like big, big, big ideas, but um, 
you know, you can think about this in your own, in your own personal life too. The decisions that you make. Maybe one of your friends will get upset, but most of them will be will be very happy with it. And then you say, "Well, that's that's fine," uh, <laughs> because I've augmented the happiness of everybody. If you do something and all of your friends get very upset by it, then you have probably made a bad decision because more people are unhappy. Right. So it's a very basic kind of uh, thing like that. Um, another another perspective on ethics is what we call natural rights. Um, so it's a very different kind of perspective, right? That everybody has certain natural rights, and we should not violate those rights. We cannot take those rights away from people. Um, so, for example, there's um, uh, John Locke made kind of a hierarchy of rights that people have. Um, the most important right that people have is the right to life. That you don't have the right to take away somebody's life, right? I know that seems quite obvious to us now, but like you know, 300 years ago, that was quite strange because people didn't feel a lot of people didn't feel it. a lot of people felt it was okay to kill other people, right? So they were saying, no, it's you have to protect people's lives. If somebody commits a crime, you can't just kill them. That that makes no sense. They they have the right to have a life, right? Second to that would be the right to liberty, to have freedom to make your own decisions and things like that. Um, and that's the second right. But the important thing is that if you, you don't have the liberty to kill people, for example, because that violates the first right, the right to life. Right? You, don't, uh, uh, you, know, you have a company and you make food but the food has some uh, bad chemicals in it, and maybe has some poison in it or something like that. And you say, well, it's my, it's my freedom to sell my food. And you say, no, because it will harm people's life. You don't have the freedom to do that. Right? So there's the third, the second two. And then the third one is property. People have the right to property. Uh, and again, if that doesn't violate liberty and life, So we think about, uh, so let me give you some examples from everyday life before we move on to talking specifically about media ethics. Um, so for example, you are talking with your classmate and you find out they, they plagiarized an essay. They, got, they hired somebody else to write the essay or they went to a website and downloaded another essay or something like that. Um, you find out your friend has done this and this is unethical. Right? It violates UIC's policy uh, towards plagiarism. Um, because all students should write their own essays, so everybody is treated fairly, right? Everybody should be treated equally to each other, right? Um, so you think, what do I do? If you tell the teacher and your classmate finds out, it will hurt your relationship. And maybe many of your friends will, <laughs> will not like that you've done this. Right? And maybe you'll lose many friends. So you'll think, hmm. And also doing this doesn't really benefit you personally. You don't get anything directly from doing this. But at the same time, in the big picture, it's good to do because of academic integrity in general. Right? It, will send a, it will send a message to other people that you can't cheat uh, and that you can't plagiarize on your essay. So you personally have to think about how to make this decision. And so you can think utilitarian and say, well, it will benefit everybody. It will hurt your classmate, but it will benefit everybody because it improves uh, the academic integrity of the school by, by, by not letting people cheat, right? It makes the school better because we know everybody has tried equally. So if you're thinking utilitarian, then of course you have to uh, turn in your, your classmate. And even though it causes a little harm, it will harm them, it will harm your relationship, but that's very small compared to the benefit it will do, for example. Um, yeah. I, know, I know we don't really have money in our wallets anymore, but let's say, for example, you have a, a wallet and there's, there's money in it, and you find it on the ground, and there's lots of money in it, hundreds and hundreds. Uh, but there's no phone number, you can't find any ID in it. 
right? Um, so what do you do? Right? There's many decisions you can make. You can just take the cash and throw the wallet away and then that's it. Nobody will know. You have more money. The person who owns the wallet, they lost the money anyway, so why not just, just take it? Um, or do you give the wallet to a, 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 a business that's nearby? And you say, oh, I found this wallet on, on the street. You give it to the cafe. You say, maybe the owner will come back and look for the wallet because they want to have their money. If, again, if you think utilitarian, if you take it from, there's only two people involved with this. There's you and the person who owns the wallet. And you don't know who they are. Right? But you also have to think of yourself, of your own personal morals. Right? Morally, on your own, you know that it's not your money and it's not right to, to take money from other people, even though, though it's an accident. Again, you have to make this decision on your own. <clears throat> Another example, your friend tells you she broke up with her boyfriend because he doesn't earn a lot of money. Right? It's happened to everybody. Right? Um, he asks you, he comes up and says, oh, why didn't she break up with me? And, and do you say, oh, it's because you, you don't have a lot of money. Well, I'm a student, I don't have money. Do you, tell your, do you tell him why your friend broke up with him? You can think it's, it's none of your business. It's their thing. But also, what she did is kind of, is not good. Right? You, shouldn't, you shouldn't break up with somebody just because they don't make a lot of money. Right? You know, well, <laughs> one perspective would be that. Other people maybe think it's quite important. Right? So you have to think about this. Does he deserve to know the truth about what happened? And if you tell him the truth, maybe it will hurt him quite a lot. Or maybe it will make him feel better. He'll be like, oh, I didn't know that she only cares about money. I'm glad that we broke up. Because I want somebody who loves me for myself. Right? Or maybe he'll be quite sad, and then he'll be like, oh, I should get a better job and earn more money. Right? Uh, but really, it's, it's none of your business. And if your friend finds out, it can hurt your relationship, right? So, you know, we make these kind of decisions every, every day in our, in our lives. Maybe not big decisions like this, but, you know, I don't know. So um, there's some other uh, ways we can consider uh, ethics, because it's also a matter of if you're, if you're actively doing something or if you don't do something, right? So in, in these cases, if you... You don't have to do anything, actually. You can just leave the situation. Your friend play drives and you just say, okay, I don't care. He asks you and you say, I don't know. You find a wallet and you just leave the wallet there. Right? You can you not make a decision. But that doesn't mean that you still have made a choice to not choose to do something. So even if you don't make a decision, you are still causing, you're still making a moral and ethical choice. Right. So here's a very famous example that people always use in, in ethics classes, and I'm sure your teachers will in the future, because it's a good way of thinking about this. So for example, there's a, a, a trolley, a cable car, I don't know what you call it. There's a subway car, um, and it's out of control, and it's going to hit and kill these five people if you do nothing. But if you, if you move the switch, it will go down the other way and it will just kill one person. So what do you do? Do you turn the switch and only one person dies? Or do you do nothing and then five people die? Who do you think? Who would do A? Who would turn the switch and then you actually kill somebody? Who would do that, A? Who would do B? Do just do nothing, and let five people die. These are the kind of moral decisions that we have to make, even if you don't do anything. If you if you think about you from a utilitarian perspective, right? Obviously, you want to turn the switch because you're benefiting the most people. You're only letting one person die, and you're preventing the death of five people. So that's a benefit. You're doing a good job by doing that. 
Uh, but the trick is that you've made a choice. You have become involved in this, and now you are the one actively killing someone. So for all the moral, ethical decisions we make, we have to think of it in, in, in this way. Even if you don't decide, your, your, your choice has consequences. Let's remember that. Um, a couple other examples, very topical examples. Um, many places, I don't think in China, but other, other countries around the world, uh, the universities uh, force all the students and staff to get COVID vaccine. And, it, and it's quite controversial. Um, especially in the United States, many people are against getting the vaccine for some reason. Um, but let's think of it ethically, right? What, are, uh, what is a good reason to oppose this? Well, it's about privacy, right? A school cannot violate your privacy. They can't read your emails or, you know, you know, force you to get medicine or something like that. That's your own body. It's your own property. Right? And they can't violate your privacy like that. And it removes control over your own body. And maybe it's not necessary because people can just wear masks and then everybody doesn't need to be vaccinated. Right? So there's many reasons to oppose this, this kind of thing. Right? Um, um, especially if the school is run by the government, if it's the government doing this. right? But many people support it and they say, yeah, you know, it sucks. It's not good. But we have to violate one of your rights to save the other right. We have to violate your right of privacy in order to save lives. Right? People need to get the COVID vaccine and wear masks in order to stop the pandemic from spreading. That's the number one goal. If it violates your privacy, that doesn't really matter. We're trying to save people's lives. Uh, so many universities and, and businesses and things like that are forcing people to do this, and, they, and this is their reason. So they say, we're doing this to save people's lives. We don't want people to die. So we have to violate privacy to save your life. Right? That's why we have a, a hierarchy of, of rights. Right? Or from utilitarianism, you think it would benefit the greater good. Maybe a couple people will, it's, it's not good to force people to take a vaccine, but it's necessary to benefit everybody. Right? Uh, on the other hand, if we think of, of a private company, as opposed to a university or a school run by the government, then things are a little bit different. Uh, yes, it violates people's privacy, uh, but also it's about discrimination at employment. Right? Uh, jobs should not be able to discriminate against people. Right? You should treat all of your employees equally, if they're black or white or women or men or whatever. You shouldn't discriminate against them. And if somebody isn't vaccinated and then you don't, you fire them, then you're discriminating against them, then that's unethical. And the same thing, it removes people's control and everybody can just wear masks. Um, but there's more reasons to support this because a private business can make their own decisions. A business is owned by people and they have the right to control their business because it's their business, it's their property. They can do what they want with their property. Um, maybe the company has some kind of, they have a social responsibility to help stop the pandemic and they don't want their employees to get sick. Because if your employees catch COVID and everybody in the office gets sick, then your business will close down and you don't make any money. But the business wants to stay open and make money, so they force everyone to get vaccines. So. Um, legal and ethical are, are also quite different. Uh, many unethical things are also illegal, but many unethical things are legal to do. Right? Law and ethics aren't the, the same. Right? Legal is done by, is official, is done by the government, uh, but ethical is unofficial. Maybe it's a habit, it's a convention, it's a, it's a cultural thing that we do. Um, or, more often, uh, certain media organizations will have their own ethical code. They will have their own rules that the employees have to follow. And if the employees break these ethical rules, then maybe they get fired, right? Um, so for example, I, I, I know more about the, the journalism codes of conduct. Um, so for example, you, uh, you have to be accurate. Even if you have time pressure, you have to write the story very quickly, you still have to be accurate, right? You shouldn't distort facts or context. 
you shouldn't avoid <laughs> you should avoid pandering to lurid curiosity. Maybe lots of people want to know the details about celebrities' lives, but you, you want to give people the important information, not just lurid curiosity. Um, when when you have to think, when you publish something, it will be on the internet forever. When you make a movie, when you make a TV show, it's going to be there forever. It's very difficult to erase these things. So you have to think about that. When you write it, it's going to be there forever. Right? Uh, there's conflicts of interest and, and things like that. There's various other elements that, that they have for codes of conduct. Um, it can be very general responsibility, independence, accuracy, impartiality, fairness, decency, right? Um, and there'll be a description of what, what is meant by that. So every, every group has these kind of ethical rules uh, that, they're, that the professionals have to follow. Um, sometimes it can be to prevent the government from getting involved. Right? Because if you, if, you, um, if you break the law, right, you want to get secret information about a celebrity, so you break into their house. You're breaking the law. Uh, so the rules here are to stop the journalists from breaking the law and also to uh, have people trust the news organization <laughs> because you want the professionals to be fair and be independent and be accurate, right? That's how you trust the news organization. So they have these kinds of codes of conduct. So we're looking at, uh, again, we're looking at a couple of different elements. We're looking at truth, how to tell the truth, how to protect people's intellectual property rights, how to get different sources of information, how to protect people's privacy, or how to violate their privacy. And like I said, who can be the ones who produce media and who can be the ones who are, who are, who are represented in the media and how are, are they represented?